Welcome to the leather journey. We're going to continue our series on pieces of leather, uh, different aspects of, uh, of leather and leather wear and why we enjoy leather so much. Um, Thea's joined me. He's, she's going to help me uh, with my boot video. And uh, if you haven't met Thea, she's a eight and a half pound Yorkie poo and kind of runs the house. Um, we did one short video on leather uh, boots where I was wearing uh, a pair of Nakona oil tan cowboy style boots. Um, I think I mentioned, and I have no idea how long this video is going to be, because as you can see, I have quite a collection of boots. Uh, I don't want you to think I'm an elitist because I didn't go out and buy all these boots, just boom and throw down 10 grand on them. Uh, I, for, for many, many years, probably the first decade I was in the lifestyle, I had a personal goal of buying one pair of boots every year. Uh, early on in my journey, I discovered uh, that Nakona Cowboy Boot Company uh, made boots in different, different widths, and their last was, was not real high. Like for those of you that are into cowboy boots and understand how high the last is in a Dan Post, some people have thicker arches and thicker feet than others, and where a Dan Post would be a wonderful boot for a lot of people, it, it wouldn't, it would never fit on me even if I had the correct size. So my, my size is a size 10, ideal size, and I'm a C width, which is in between, most ladies boots are B widths, and most men boots come standard as a D width. But Nakona, uh, you could pay a markup, or a, I think it was a makeup fee. You, in the old days, it was 50 bucks, a $50 makeup fee added to the cost of your boot. And they would make you up a pair of boots in whatever width you needed. So a C, C width fit me perfect. So for the price of these boots, and $50, I could have a boot that fit me literally like a kid glove and felt so good on my feet that I never wanted to wear anything but uh, a cowboy boot with a number three toe and a, and a standard walking heel. Uh, a riding heel would be a little more ex extreme on the heel and designed to get in and out of uh, uh, off horseback and into your stirrups, whereas riding heel is not quite as extreme. So that was the style that I decided on early on in my journey. And my goal was to buy one pair of boots every year. So you can see here, I have 12 pairs of boots that represent 12 years in my journey. Uh, along the way, uh, I got rid of two other pairs of boots. So in my leather journey, I've owned 14 pair of cowboy boots. One of those pairs was my daily wear boot that I wore for about 15 years. They were resold three times. I would get them rehealed almost once a year. Sometimes I had to do it twice a year. And finally, I put them to rest and, uh, and had to get rid of them. The other pair of boots that I no longer have, but I will talk briefly about, uh, were made out of elephant skin. An elephant's an endangered creature or species. But what Nakona did was, um, uh, regardless of, of whether they're uh, endangered or not, there's still poachers that poach elephants even to this day. And Nakona uh, participated in a program with several African countries uh, the African countries would arrest the poachers, confiscate the skins or the hides, and Nakona would buy the confiscated hides from the countries, and, and in turn, the countries would take the revenue from uh, the sale of these confiscated hides and fund their anti-poacher program, uh, to fund the arresting of these fellows that were going around killing elephants. Well, the story behind my elephant boots is I got them on sale online 
and they were a size 10 and a half and a D width. They weren't made to fit my feet. And literally, I love that boot. Elephant's almost indestructible as a hide. Uh, so if you have an opportunity to acquire a pair of elephant boots, I wouldn't pass them up, but they need to fit. So these boots, because they were 10 and a half and D width, every single time I wore them, they would cause a blister. And finally, after a few years, I decided they would be better off in someone's hands that they actually fit. So I sold those boots on eBay. But what I want to do for this video is just go quickly through, I don't know how quickly you can get through 12 boots, uh, and talk about a little bit about the leather and a little bit about the fit and the way that boot feels when I'm wearing it and what occasions I might or might not wear a particular boot in. So there's some that I don't wear hardly at all anymore. So we'll start with the boots on the far, your, your left, my far right. Uh, these boots I only wear in the wintertime, in the snow. And the reason I wear them in the snow is they're oil tanned and I can keep them uh, greased up and waterproof them, but the soles have a Vibram sole that will grip the snow and the ice, and hence I only wear them in the snow. Well, now that I've retired to Florida, I don't wear these boots anymore. I'll pull them out maybe once or twice a year and condition them and put them back in the closet. Okay, now this pair of boots, uh, I'm not going to go over the, the width and the style because the style is pretty consistent. Uh, this will be the last time I mention it's a number three toe uh, with, a, with a walking heel, C width. These are Nakona. I believe Nakona called this particular pattern a patchwork quilt ostrich skin. And if you can see, I don't have a camera person, but I'm going to try to give you a close up of these. You can see that Nakona had taken scraps of leftover scraps of leather from when they had made a, a run of ostrich skin boots and they sewed all the little patches together and made a patchwork quilt pattern and created another boot so they didn't waste that leather. Those are very comfortable. Uh, ostrich breathes fairly well. So you can wear them in, in a, a hot environment, hot climate. But I call those partner boots. The reason I call them partner boots is because once I've had them on, if my feet have sweated a little bit, I'm not gonna get those back off without assistance. That assistance will come in two forms, either from a partner that helps pull that boot off my foot or with the help of a boot jack. If you don't know what a boot jack is, most Western stores uh, or, or Western or tax shops will sell these. It's a little piece of wood uh, with a stirrup shape and, and suede inside. And you literally put that on the floor, you jack your heel into it and lift and pull the boot off. So you can get partner boots off without the actual assistance of a partner. So this next boot I'm gonna talk about, uh, unlike the patchwork quilt ostrich boot, uh, is elk. Elk is very, very warm, but it's also very soft. Wearing these boots is almost like wearing a really nice pair of house slippers and very soft, very comfortable, but very warm. So if I'm not in an air-conditioned environment or up north, my feet are gonna sweat in those boots and you won't see me wear those very often, okay? This boot is bull hide and the top grain, if you look closely, you can see from the top grain, there's the, uh, the pattern from the skin of uh, of the bull. Uh, very durable, uh, very nice boot. Not a partner boot. I can get those on and off without the help of a boot jack or a partner. These are just cowhide. 
It's got a nice smooth top grain, easily polished. This particular uh, color is called black cherry. You can actually find uh, black cherry polish. I'll, I'll talk in another video a little bit more about my boot care and how I approach it. These are kind of unique. This is Stingray. And it almost feels like it's pebbled and it has a texture on the surface. And Stingray almost feels like uh, a brand new leather basketball. The grain on the outside of a leather basketball. That's what it reminds me of anyway. But a very nice boot. Uh, doesn't breathe very well, pretty hot, and it's definitely a partner boot. Those fit me very snugly. Not gonna get in and out of those easily. So these crazy boots here, these are leather, or le lizard, excuse me. This is a lizard boot and kind of a whiter cream color. You go, De Dex, what are you ever gonna wear those for? Well. When I have a, sh uh, a whip show to do, uh, or a performance scene, which I do occasionally do those if, I'm, if they're requested, I like wearing this boot because obviously in front of a crowd or on a stage, it, fair, it stands out. It says, hey, pay attention to what we're doing here. Uh, so for, for like a whip show, I'll wear these boots with my leathers and the contrast between the leather pants and the lizard boots is very dramatic. So I don't even have to be throwing my whip really well. If I'm wearing those boots, people pay attention. Okay, this is one of two pairs of snakeskin boots I own. These are, these are rattlesnake. And I will say rattlesnake um, it feels dry to me most of the time, so I use um, a conditioner made for, uh, I use a reptile cleaner and conditioner. It sprays on, you spray it on, let it dry, wipe it off. That's what I use for, for my uh, rattlesnake and my python boot. But I will say, the python I've owned for quite a few years and it, it's a little bit discolored. It started to yellow a lot, uh, which I've, I've noticed other people that wear python. That's a kind of a common thing that happens with python. I will say my python is one of the more comfortable boots for wear that I own. It breathes. Uh, my feet don't sweat in it. And, it, and it's a really it's a really nice looking boot. So again, the Python and the Rattlesnake, I will use the Reptile Conditioner with. So then we get to my traditional black boots. This boot is alligator or caiman, and it's like wearing armor. Oh my goodness. Uh, it doesn't breathe at all. Your feet are gonna sweat in it at least mine do, and uh, they're going to sweat even in an air-conditioned or cold space. But when, you, when you're wearing this boot, you don't have to worry about somebody stepping on your foot uh, or you you getting your foot hurt because it literally feels like you're wearing a suit of armor and that your feet are well protected and nothing's gonna happen to your feet when you wear them. So these boots are ostrich, uh, very comfortable. Ostrich is very comfortable. Ostrich breathes very well. Uh, I wear these a lot when I'm at a BDSM convention because they, they, my feet don't overheat in them and they are uh, quite comfortable and have a breathable skin and leather. I will say uh, about this particular boot though, um, Ostrich is pretty expensive, and I got these on sale. They're not a C-width, they're a D-width. So when I wear this boot, I have to wear an extra thick sock. And if I wear it all day long, 
sometimes they'll blister my feet because they just aren't my size exactly. Okay, so this is probably the favorite, most favorite boot that I own. Uh, I call it my go-to boot if I'm in a high protocol situation or I'm wearing my leathers, you're gonna most often see me wearing this boot. Uh, it's a Nakona cowhide boot. It's been oil tanned, so I'm not gonna use polish on it. I will occasionally take edge dressing and very carefully dress the edges. Uh, for those of you that have seen me throw a whip, uh, you know I, I kind of dance and keep rhythm with my whip. Sometimes I describe it as throwing a rhythm whip. Uh, and I have taken the bottom of this boot and half sold it with suede. Uh, if, if any of you know anything about dance and dance shoes, you know that the bottom of dance shoes are suede. So if you want to say these are my dancing boots that I dance with the whip with, uh, that's absolutely true. I have suede on the bottom of these boots and I just recently got them, them re-heeled. Uh, but my, definitely my go-to boot, my most comfortable boot. And if, if I'm in a high protocol situation, I'm more than likely going to be in that boot. So that kind of concludes the introduction to my collection. I will admit at this point in my leather journey, I'm, I'm not collecting boots anymore. Uh, I don't even have a feel for how much money I spent on these boots, other than I'll tell you I didn't buy more than one pair a year. I saved up my pennies. The Western store that I worked with for many years would allow me to put a deposit down. I would send them 10 or $20 every month. And by the end of the year, I had enough pennies in the bank at the Western store for them to order the pair of boots that I was interested in. So in the comments below, you could look up the different types of leather and see what the current prices are for a pair of boots similar to that if you wanted to, and you could post that, that would be informative to uh, the viewers. Uh, I'm gonna do another little video on leather care, at least the way I approach leather care for these boots, and uh, you're welcome to watch it. I'm not a boot black, I'm not into boot blacking. Uh, I do always, when I go to a, a BDSM convention, I'll take at least two pairs of boots and I will go to the boot black on two different occasions and have those uh, conditioned and brought up. Uh, and if you know anything about boot blacks, you get to where you know a few boot blacks and you, you like their work. And so when I go into a convention, I look and see if there's a boot black that I've worked with before. And I, I definitely like to uh, establish a, a relationship with my boots in a specific boot black and continue that relationship uh, if possible from event to event, not always possible. So we'll talk a little bit about boot care in a future video and I'm gonna try to tease Moodstone into bringing in her boots or her shoes and talking a little bit about them. She has a completely different mindset about her boots and I won't say one mindset is right over another mindset. I've said this many, many times. Every, every person's leather journey is different and it's unique. This has been my journey. My journey was an interest in exploring the different types of leathers and doing it in a way that I felt like I could afford and I felt like I could afford a pair of boots every year and that was one of my goals. Well, when you see 12 pairs of boots, you're gonna go, well, Dex, you have a fetish. Well, maybe I do. Uh, people collect a lot of different things. This is one of the things that over the years that I've collected. But the good thing about, about boots is you wear them. You get to wear them. And before I retired to Florida, I wore nothing but cowboy boots every single day. Now that I'm in Florida, I do tend to only wear them to leather events and to the dungeon. I don't wear them for daily wear anymore uh, just because it, 
95 degrees outside with 80% humidity. Uh, so I pick and choose where I'm gonna wear my boots now. But welcome to my collection of boots. And I hope it's been beneficial to you. And we'll do another video short on, uh, uh, on boot care, at least Dex's approach to boot care. Thanks.